Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> oh, I wasn't waiting for a response. Uh, 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 I actually just arrived today uh, in the morning, so I have a terrible jet lag. So if I stall for a few seconds, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that's why. Right? Yeah, and oh, also I, I brought some t-shirts to give away for some good questions, uh, but they already have been disappeared. Oh, look at that. They uh, are appearing back. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. So I have a couple of t-shirts and a couple of uh, chargers, so for those who uh, ask uh, questions <coughs> and, you know, if you will be shy and not ask any questions, I'm planning to give them away anyway, so I just don't have to uh, take them back. Uh, anyway, so uh, as uh, the gentleman mentioned, uh, I'm the CEO of Percona, and uh, if you wonder what Percona is and what we do, uh, we provide the uh, solutions for the uh, open source uh, uh, databases. Uh, MySQL, that is uh, what we started with and I think m most well known for, but as well as uh, MariaDB, MongoDB, and now we even announced uh, uh, support for, for Postgres, right, uh, just recently, uh, uh, I think about a month ago. Uh, we do support managed services, consulting, training, and we also produce uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of software. What is interesting about our software is what uh, all the software we do is completely open source. We don't do open core. We believe in uh, enterprise grade, but completely free and open source uh, software. And also another thing which is uh, interesting about Percona is while we have our own software, we support the uh, large ecosystem, right? So wherever you have your in MySQL, MariaDB, or maybe some cloud databases like uh, Amazon RDS, Aurora, Google Cloud SQL, uh, we got you covered. We've been in business for now almost uh, 12 years and uh, served really more than uh, 300 customers at this point, including many of uh, the uh, top uh, uh, internet companies, right, as well as some uh, even uh, Singapore-based ones, uh, as well as uh, many uh, large retailers and so on and so forth. Okay, MySQL 8. Anybody tried MySQL 8 here? Oh, look at that, okay. Uh, let's step back. A a anybody heard about MySQL here? Oh, free hands, wow, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, so what MySQL version guys are you running? Uh, 5.7, anyone? 5.7, 5.6? Anyone 5.6? No, okay. Don't know, don't care, right? So some MySQL, uh, I can, uh, in. Uh, run my queries on it, right, and it works, right? So, oh, I see for some it doesn't. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, MySQL 5.7 was a previous version. Anybody knows why this one is called MySQL 8? Well, uh, what company uh, runs, uh, owns MySQL, do you guys know? Oracle. Oracle. And if you to put two O's together, what is going to be like? <laughs> That's going to be eight, right? Well, but that's really not, uh, not the real story. The real story is uh, actually even worse. <laughs> so uh, obviously marketing decided what there is a time for major version change because MySQL 5.0, I think, was released at least 10 years ago. I don't even remember how far along, but I think it's more than 10, uh, yeah, more than 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, well, a uh, long time ago, right? So uh, actually, MySQL 6 was already mm, busy with some sort of a uh, failed project. Back time in 2000, there was a MySQL 6.0.3, which just was never uh, a, a rich kind of maturity and was abandoned in favor of, uh, I think, MySQL 5.5. Version 7 was used by MySQL cluster for many years, right? And they decided, hey, we skip that as well, unify all together, it will be MySQL uh, 8, and that's uh, also instead of MySQL 5.8, and that's also a very simple change by dropping the 5 together, right? So if you heard about MySQL 5.8 before, and now hear about MySQL 8, that's the same stuff as just uh, uh, what it uh, became after marketing got hands on the naming. And it's also finally uh, GA, right, or was released, stable, uh, recommended for production uh, by o Oracle 
Uh, that is, and that happened just uh, about a month ago. So that is really, really fresh off the press. Now, <clears throat> I want to highlight something that is important uh, as a full disclosure. A lot of examples here I uh, borrowed liberally from Oracle uh, documentation and uh, other uh, pages, right? So I uh, want to give a credit where it's due. And uh, this presentation is actually part of a bigger presentation I have in MySQL about uh, MySQL 8, which covers both features for developers and for ops people. But as uh, you guys just gave me half an hour, I removed anything operationally focused and left only develop foc developer focused stuff right here. Now, the first thing which is interesting and important in MySQL 8 is a character set change. Versions before MySQL 8 were uh, with Latin 1 in character set as default, and Latin 1 doesn't really go very far in Asia, <laughs> right? Mm. Well, but e even uh, in America, it doesn't really go that far anymore because, you know what? Everybody goes mobile right now, and you know what at least half of character set, uh, characters used in mobile is emojis. And emojis is UTF-8, and even in particular UTF-8 MB4, right? This is uh, the reason what my uh, what uh, UTF-8 MB4 uh, is uh, default uh, character set in in MySQL 8, and there was a lot of work <coughs> done uh, m uh, optimizing uh, that uh, thing in MySQL 8, and that is uh, important, right? Because if you look at a lot of uh, benchmark which people publish uh, 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 everywhere on the internet, many of them are Latin, idea, Latin one because that's default and, well, because frankly it uh, uh, worked faster. So that is an important change. Yeah. What does the MB4 part mean? Oh, what does MB4 means? Okay, so uh, MB uh, stands for multi-byte, right? So uh, uh, four, that means four bytes. So in uh, MySQL, previous versions of MySQL, right, the first uh, MB3 appear, right, and that means uh, dynamic length uh, using up to three, uh, three characters, right, and it would allow to express a lot of UTF-8 characters, but not all of them, right? Particular emojis, they are in, uh, e uh, they only expressed in the MB4 uh, uh, sequence. So, okay. Now, another uh, the interesting feature which developers can use is uh, uh, now you, uh, with uh, InnoDB storage engine, and pretty much 99% of, uh, of folks are using InnoDB storage engine right now, even wherever they realize it or not, it has these very nice features as no wait or skip locked. What does no wait means? No wait means I uh, run the query, and if it has to wait uh, on some row level logs, I can just um, throw an uh, error immediately, right, uh, and may, uh, in some cases. But uh, this already could be stimulated before, just more painfully, right? I could just set in a db log wait timeout to, to zero, and that would, uh, would uh, work appropriately the same way. This feature is even more, uh, more cool. What it says and say, when uh, you're doing select uh, for update, skip locked. That means if a, rocks, uh, a certain rows are locked, then you can just skip them. And that is very uh, helpful in a situation, for example, when you want to do something like ticket reservation, right? Uh, maybe some people are already, you know, booking some of the places. It's much better to, uh, to skip them, right, and, uh, and show people other uh, available seats, right, than uh, <clears throat> Uh, then just to wait for that, right, can uh, really make all the protos much more eff efficient. And skip locked is really something which is very hard to work around on the application level if uh, that doesn't exist. Yes. Another uh, nice feature is descending indexes. So uh, what, I uh, what is that and why is it, uh, uh, why is it important? So <clears throat> when uh, you uh, run the queries with order by, right, then uh, for that query to be uh, fast, you want to make sure the order by clause matches the index, right? Now, uh, 
mm, in the previous MySQL versions, you could create the indexes which say, hey, I sort that by, I don't know, let's say, age in descending order and by, uh, you know, lo location right away in ascending order, right? You could uh, do those things, but MySQL would ignore those definitions and build the uh, uh, index by ascending order in, uh, in both co for all the columns. And that means you could not really write the queries which sort by the different, uh, in the different order by columns uh, uh, which use the index. And that would require you to do some like a very crazy workarounds. Like you say, well, you know what, if I need to sort uh, by this column, let me create another column and make it negative. Well, that's easy for integers, right? But if you want to do something which is kind of negative for strings, that kind of becomes a little bit more painful, <laughs> right? Uh, 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 for example, so mm, that, is, uh, that is a very cool, uh, cool feature which allows you to get uh, queries when you sort by, diff by columns in a different order uh, handled. Another big focus of MySQL uh, since version 5.7, and I think <coughs> uh, really culminating in MySQL 8, is support for, uh, for JSON, right? A lot of uh, developers, especially front uh, end developers, they like to get the data in JSON notation. So it's much easier for them to work with that mm, than with uh, uh, the, you know, other uh, format. And what now MySQL allows you is to get your relational data and kind of pack it either to the, uh, essentially, the set of J JavaScript uh, objects, right, uh, to JSON objects, or uh, you can even put that together to create one, uh, all your result set as pretty one, as big uh, JSON object, the, which is kind of very, easy for developers to work in JavaScript, right? And you don't have to have your application layer doing that prep work for you. But what is uh, even more mm, uh, cool uh, in this case is uh, uh, what now you can do the opposites as well. You can do a JSON object and you can uh, use that kind of JSON table function to essentially convert that and provide you some uh, of the inline table from which you can select, right? You can see in this case, I have a uh, mm, uh, JSON object, which is in this case, uh, uh, this array. I say, hey, I want uh, uh, to convert that as a table, which will have two values. The first one will be row, uh, row ID, and the second one will be those values, right? And then I get a table in result. Now, why is it uh, helpful? Well, now think about that. I can now use that to do things like uh, group by or to do join, right, uh, based on the data which I stored in, uh, in JSON object, which allow you to do some really, really uh, uh, cool stuff. Now, there was also a lot of work done uh, by, to help extract the data from JSON. In many cases, when you have your JSON object, you may not want to get uh, all the data, mm, uh, uh, to select uh, all the data from it, right? For example, uh, in this case, we can, uh, uh, when working with arrays, uh, we, we can select uh, not just a single element, which was already supported, by, uh, in this case, we are selecting uh, elements, you know, from uh, one to three, right? Uh, and uh, as you can see in this case, where um, counter kind of goes from, uh, zero, right? Or you can say, hey, what is the element which is the last minus two, right? So that allows you to uh, select the uh, by position not only from a star but from an end, right? Which is also quite uh, quite convenient. The next thing I go in, uh, into their uh, more practical SQL support. Now, one of the MySQL uh, limitations uh, was often it did not. Uh, support a lot of SQL, uh, uh, modern SQL standard features. For example, common table uh, expressions or, or CTEs. And CTEs are very helpful the, to build uh, various uh, uh, recur uh, recursive queries, right? like uh, this one, for example, when you want to operate with something like a tree-like structures e in, their, uh, in the database, right? So uh, in this case, uh, it's kind of, uh, 
uh, complicated, but in this case, what, what we uh, what we do is we retrieve uh, the data which uh, which goes from uh, the star of a tree, right, of a depth zero, all the way inside the tree, right, and kind of pulls out all the subtree of categories with a single uh, single select. Now CTEs. Uh, if that looks complicated, well, it is not. CTE is a very powerful. There is actually, you can find at Perconas blog, Sudoku solver, which is written as a uh, uh, recursive CTE, right? So you can really do uh, a lot of their uh, fancy stuff um, mm -hmm. out there. And then a uh, second thing is uh, uh, window functions. That is another thing which is very helpful for some you know, data analysis applications. Again, this is kind of pretty uh, trivial example here to explain uh, what it works, uh, how it works, right? Window and functions allow you pretty much uh, apply something like a group by function, but compute that for each row, right? Like in this case, you can see uh, <coughs> uh, we are ta having a table where we are applying um, uh, computing sum as a uh, uh, as a window and function, right? Now, you'd say, why is that really useful? On itself, it may not be uh, that useful. What is really power comes from this over clause, which really allows you to, uh, to have a lot of uh, very uh, fancy use cases, right? For example, you can uh, c compute things as, as moving averages uh, using this stuff, right? You can uh, for uh, we've had over, over, for example, say, hey, I want to compute the uh, sum of the three elements, one before, one after uh, each of the uh, elements in the set, right, or, or, mm, or stuff like that. That stuff is, is really, uh, is really uh, powerful, all right? You, uh, I would uh, suggest to check out uh, with some examples. Okay, the next one is much better GIS. JS, uh, uh, is uh, uh, getting uh, increasingly more uh, important, right, if so many uh, uh, geolocation-enabled applications and so on and so forth. And MySQL had um, support before, right, and it was actually quite uh, already improved in MySQL 5.7. But uh, in 8, uh, it really was uh, a focus to really uh, kind of catch up, right, and uh, exceed PostgreSQL JS set. And, and really, I mean, uh, if you ask PostgreSQL po folks, they probably wouldn't agree uh, with something like that, but uh, there was <laughs> a lot of uh, work done mm, out there. What uh, I don't really, I'm mm, not a big expert in JS particular, but I, I talk to developer that is like really uh, fascinating stuff, right? So for example, it turns out what uh, different countries they are using uh, or even kind of different uh, location within the country, they may use different set of coordinates, right? Uh, because uh, while looking at the mm, Earth as uh, as a sphere, right, or even as kind of really kind of like uh, the modified uh, sphere, uh, works if you want to find, you know, all the coffee shops in approximately 10 miles distance, right? That's easy. Now, if you move to some more particular uh, G, uh, GPS applications, for example, saying, well, I own this kind of plot of land, right? Where exactly is that border? And if you need the accuracy, which is measure, measured in centimeters, not in meters, right? Then uh, you can't really use that. You need a much more, uh, the, uh, much more specific uh, a reference system, and that is what MySQL uh, empowers. Among a lot of uh, other uh, advanced features uh, for JS. Now, another thing is document store. Anybody knows what document store MySQL is? Anyone? Okay, so document store, that is a new feature introduced in MySQL 5.7, actually, which allows you to use MySQL pretty much as if it were MongoDB. Right, you can uh, uh, really use a very similar CRUD API to put uh, uh, and retrieve uh, JSON objects uh, from it, right? And with MySQL 8, uh, there are also a number of uh, improvements such as full text search, indexing, and uh, GeoJSON support, right? So mm, that is continued to improve. 
And now finally, very uh, hot from the press is uh, this thing called instant add column. That is not in the latest MySQL release, but that's uh, you know c coming up, right? I think uh, in the next release in a few months or so. And this allows you to add the column instantly, even to very large tables, by uh, pretty much just modifying the metadata, right, and not doing any uh, uh, other any kind of data uh, data changes. That is the difference between instant and online, right? What does online mean? Online means uh, what uh, the operation happens online, so your queries are not blocked, right? You can see, but it can be still very heavy, right? If you have to uh, a rebuild a couple of terabytes table, even if it happens online, it may take many, many hours, right, to complete, taking a lot of server resources. Instant, that means none of that happens, it's uh, just metadata uh, modification. And that was uh, uh, contributed by Tencent Games, uh, right, a company from, uh, 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 from China. And why I point this out? Because there is, you know, some rumors like saying, oh, Oracle in MySQL, they never accept any contributions from anyone. Well, uh, actually they do, right? I mean, uh, th they are, uh, th I mean, th I think they're taking pretty, uh, pretty good uh, care uh, with uh, MySQL development out there. Something else you need to know as uh, as developer uh, is what in MySQL 8 it defaults to the uh, user authentication of improved security, which is kind of uh, SHA2 based with some uh, you know performance optimizations and, and so on and so forth, right? Which is all great, but this new protocol is not really available for uh, all, the gen uh, all the languages, right? Not every language driver has been uh, updated. I think, uh, for example, support for Go language uh, was just committed uh, two days ago, right? I know because I report a bug, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work with, uh, with MySQL uh, 8. Uh, so a lot of legacy drivers may not work out of a box of MySQL 8. The good thing is there is actual solution, which is called uh, MySQL native password. You can just say, hey, use my, uh, uh, you can even create the user to use the legacy authentication scheme called MySQL native password, or you can even make it used by default, right? MySQL 8, actually, if you install it, it will even ask you, at least on, uh, on uh, Debian and Ubuntu-based distributions, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want improved uh, uh, authentication security or do you want compatibility, right? And you can set that. So, uh, but uh, uh, th that is important because many developers are getting beaten by this because many libraries, right, are not, uh, uh, not updated yet. Okay, well, uh, th that's pretty much a quick uh, overview of developers, I, I hope you find something uh, cool in MySQL 8, which you can uh, uh, put uh, into use. And then uh, I think I have a uh, couple of uh, shameless or not so shameless plugs. Uh, one is uh, the Iranian conference, uh, Percona Live Europe, in, uh, which will take place in Frankfurt, Germany. So if somebody likes uh, to travel, we welcome you to either submit the talk or it doesn't have to be about MySQL, we really care about all the open source databases uh, right now, or uh, you obviously are welcome to come and attend uh, as well. And then another piece which I think is uh, uh, partic uh, maybe particularly interesting for the group of uh, uh, developers, we have uh, uh, in Percona uh, over uh, uh, the last years have been putting a lot of work in this uh, tool called Percona Monitoring and, and Management. Uh, and that really uh, allows you to uh, look at a lot of, get a lot of observability or operational intelligence in, uh, in MySQL, right? It has a lot of uh, fancy graphs uh, like that. Now, the feature which I think is the most important for developers particularly is what that also allows you to look at the queries and which of the queries causing the most load for on MySQL so you can go ahead and fix it and we'll fix them. And what my recommendation, uh, is to figure out how uh, to uh, uh, to use those 
on your kind of uh, with your development system or something so you can uh, make sure you understand the cost of the queries you're running before you go into production right and and fix them because there are so many downtimes are being caused by kind of uh, bad queries one way or another making that to a production system okay that's it uh, any questions no no questions and it's like oh oh yeah um, are you only just that's right yeah so from database the technologies which we cover at Percona would be MySQL and MariaDB uh, right wherever you would call it same or different that's up to you uh, MongoDB uh, and Postgres so can you make a comment about like the latest uh, compare the latest uh, Postgres to yeah, yeah, a lot of those features uh, are are in uh, in Postgres. Uh, that's right. Now there was uh, like pretty in-depth standard comparison, right? I would say there are some features in uh, those uh, CTE implementation which uh, exist in MySQL, which are not in uh, in uh, in Postgres uh, uh, as well. But uh, I would say in general, Postgres has been more powerful in terms of SQL language support, right, for uh, here, for most of things. Like, for example, uh, partitioning was not there in Postgres, right, as partitioning until, uh, uh, until very recently, right? Uh, where Postgres, from my uh, standpoint, uh, uh, runs behind still is replication, right? Even though there is a logical replication, uh, available now in Postgres, it's uh, not as uh, robust as uh, as MySQLs. Okay. Do you want to claim your T-shirt? Sure. Okay. I have your choice of uh, are we si different sizes or not? Let me see. One is M and one is L. Whatever. M. M? Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, does Percona have published or plan to publish any Heroku add-ons? Heroku add-ons? Oh, well, uh, we don't publish uh, right now, but that is a, a good thing for, for us to consider. What you would uh, like to see? So I, I don't know that much about your tools, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I think they seem reasonable. Mm -hmm. I think because most of us are, are on Heroku in some way or another, on either at work or uh, with our pet projects, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it could be an interesting way to explore the tool. Uh, okay, now that's, uh, the, uh, that is interesting. I would say for, uh, uh, for us, uh, we did not uh, get a lot of requests for uh, Heroku in, uh, in particular. Right? I think a lot of people for our stuff, they look either uh, integration of some automation frameworks, you know, like a Puppet, Chef, Ansible, or uh, uh, Docker, right, uh, is, uh, is another pretty, pretty hot uh, thing right now. Okay, do you want a t-shirt? I can take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other questions? I need at least two more questions, right, so we don't have to pick random people. No? Oh, who cares about my school anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's 